Hi, my name is Meg and you're watching You Can Ask That. Here's our panel talking about travelling with diabetes. Um, there isn't much travelling going on at the moment, but there seems to be some really great questions we have coming through for when we're getting on planes again. So number one question, can I buy insulin overseas at a similar price under, under Medicare? No, unless you are work, there are some... Uh, there are some countries, I've lived overseas a couple of times and every time I have, I've checked out how I'm eligible to get insulin under their healthcare system. But unless you are working in a certain country and you are eligible for their health insurance scheme, then no, you need to take it with you. Uh, or yeah. yeah, if you're overseas for a long time, you're probably going to be working. So they're going to be schemes in place. Uh, but you can't, don't expect to go and buy, you know, a five, you know, 25 things of insulin for 30 bucks. It's not going to. No. A lot of people, when they choose to go overseas for a longer period of time, will actually fill up all of their hand luggage with insulin um, just because of the price overseas. Yeah. I um, did that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and on top of that, um, Georgie and I were having a conversation the other day and we were saying that, you know, Georgie said to me, like, if you can't afford uh, travel health insurance, chances are you probably shouldn't be traveling. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've had to use that having type one and being overseas. I had a really bad hypo in Italy um, and yep, yeah, cost me nothing. So I had travel insurance. Uh, it's just really not that expensive and it's super, super important that you have it just in case something happens. And if worse comes to worse and you're stuck somewhere, the diabetes community online is amazing. There is mm -hmm. someone out there that can help you. I had a pump shipped to me from England to France when mine just up and stops working um, within like 48 hours because people are awesome. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So um, the next question is around like, how do you manage your insulin and your blood levels while flying through different time zones? Ooh. Set alarms. It's <laughs> a good oh, one. Set I alarms <laughs> um, if you can. I mean, obviously, you have to take your phone off aeroplane on onto aeroplane mode, but try to keep to your regular sort of um, times and your blood sugar level checks. And it might be that every four hours or three hours that you're retesting because you get really excited on the plane, you get adrenaline, and it might you know muck up your sugar yeah. levels a little bit too. So that frequency of testing is really important. Um, but what I've done in the past is that I've kept checking throughout that time just pretending like I was on my regular time zone and then slowly shifted back into a new time zone when I've got to my destination I found my diabetes educator was really great with helping me with that yeah so, yeah I did a, a similar thing but I actually like learned the time zone of where I was going and transitioned into it before getting on the plane wow awesome. awesome I yeah. guess you're just sitting down on the plane aren't you so yeah, yeah. I always want to tent basil on a plane that just works for me um because just usually they're long flights and if you're sitting down for 14 hours and all you're doing is eating and sleeping then it's usually I'm going to run a bit higher so yeah. if you're on a pump I like to yeah run a tent basil or when I was on Lantus or a long acting I would just have a little bit more hmm. yeah but that's something to discuss with your healthcare professional they're really good at it they answer those questions all the time yeah yeah, we're getting some really cool questions around this traveling topic. Um, how do you keep your insulin cool when you're backpacking overseas? So maybe for a longer period of time. Uh, can I answer that one? Yeah. <laughs> there are these really great little um, SQ. Oh my gosh, I've had a mind blank. I remember what they're called. Thank you, Frio. I was like, Frico? <laughs> Frio? Um, the little Frio packs, so they're basically like, they've got these little cool crystals inside them. You pop them into water and it keeps it cool. I packed all of my insulin. I still did it. Packed it in and just had it in my backpack and it keeps it cool the whole time. Um, I would not put your insulin in. You don't, it really, you need to keep it cool to store it. But if you're backpacking for less than three months, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, anything longer than that. We've talked about that before, but yeah, Frio packs, they come in lots of different sizes. Um, you can get a lot of insulin into there. <laughs> I think I put like six months worth in. Um, yeah, they're really, really great. And you can just chuck them in your bag and then they stay really cool. You can get them online there. Yeah. The other thing, I think if you're backpacking overseas and you're putting your insulin into your backpack, it's worth just taking it out mm -hmm. and putting it in your hand luggage. There's two reasons Don't for check that. It. <laughs> yeah. 
first one is it's notorious that luggage gets lost when you're traveling interstate or even overseas, for example. The second thing is it's got a pretty high chance of freezing. freezing. And you don't want to get to your destination and have no insulin. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Even if you just fill up your hand luggage with like insulin and a book. Like, <laughs> and then it'll be gone by the time you come back so you can fill it up with shopping. Like it's a win-win situation. Um. Yeah, that kind of leads us into another question that we had, which was around, can I bring my needles on the flight? Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Yep, you can. Um, I always have a letter. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just but to show like someone. Every language you can think of. Any body or crossing, get that language. Mm. Um, was it you that had soup cross? Oh, yeah, I had. Yeah. I Whenever I go backpacking, I'll look up the word for diabetes and sugar in that language because those are like the two ones that you need <laughs> um, in case something's going on with you. Yeah. Um, so if someone understands one or two of those, yeah, that's that's my hot tip for, for the travel. It's amazing. I would never have thought of doing not, that. Not just a hat rack, my friend. <laughs> um, so another question's just come through. Um, we've got, what happens if I get unwell and I have to go to hospital overseas? Travel insurance. Travel insurance. <laughs> we can't stress it enough. Travel insurance. If you get unwell, you go to hospital, you have to look like, you have to go. There's yeah. no option yeah. about not going. If you're unwell and you need to go to hospital, mm-hmm. you have to go to hospital. So And yeah, the people on the other end of the phone it. are so nice too. Like yeah. I remember calling them in tears and they just they're fantastic. They deal with it all the time. Travel that's my only response to that. Travel insurance. Yeah. But go, don't worry about the money. Yeah. Worry about that after the fact. Get mm-hmm. better and deal with whatever yeah. is owed or not. Not owed. Yeah. If you get travel insurance, you'll be fine. As like a general travel a uh, good tip and especially if you're in safety is provide your family or your friends and closest friends or partners with the itinerary of where you're going yeah. where your flights are going to be going and things like that because if they don't hear from you and you are unwell at least they can kind of flag with them saying hey she's meant to be here at this hotel by now I might give up the hotel a call or whatever it might be and people can actually track and see where things might have gone wrong yeah for sure yeah, and I know, so the next question's coming and it's also about backpacking. I know we talked a bit about um, keeping your insulin cool while backpacking, um, but this person wants to go backpacking when they finish school and they're not sure if it's a good idea for them because they do have diabetes. Do you have any advice for them on how they can do that safely? Do it. I went backpacking eight months after I got diagnosed with type 1. <laughs> if I can do it, anyone can do it. Back in the day before CGMs were like a thing, <laughs> like do it. Um, that's all. Yeah, you and can. You can do it. Don't let it dictate what you you will and won't do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's ways around it. You can do it. And if you want to do it hard enough, you're gonna find a way. Yeah. There's also there's an Instagram account called Type One Backpacker, um, Lydia from the UK. <laughs> Legitimate. So that's great tips. And there's heaps of different things on social media that you can find, just like little sort of hacks and stuff. Um, Because lots of people do it and you can totally do it as well. Thanks for watching. If you want to hear more from Georgie, Louis and Kyle, check out the Diabetes Victoria YouTube channel.